Usually when you ask someone what it takes to be a good player in Guild Wars 2 PvP, they will always at least mention kiting. Learn how to kite bro. But what is kiting? When you search on YouTube how to kite in Guild Wars 2, you're probably going to get a guide to kiting a raid boss. Nobody actually tells you and shows you good examples of kiting. 99% of the players I coach usually have heard of kiting but do not know how to effectively do it. So today, for those of you genuinely looking to improve your performance in Guild Wars 2, most specifically in SPVP, but definitely in World vs World as well, I promise you, after watching this video, you will improve at least a little bit in kiting. So today, we're going to cover three things. What is kiting and why do we kite? When do you kite? And how good players kite? Let's get straight into it. So, what is kiting? Kiting in Guild Wars 2 is the act of using a combination of movement skills, jumps, or teleports to gain a favorable position in a fight. To make it extremely easy to understand, let's break it down into a few sections. The first is basic kiting. Basic kiting is something you should use in almost all situations. This is more or less using your movement to your advantage to move out of enemy damage, making it harder for them to land skills and combos on you. Very simple, right? Here are some very straightforward examples of that. So here we have a Revenant who I'm going into 1v1. It's a very straightforward, easy burst for me. I get him down right away, but as you can see, another Necro comes in and I kite out of his wells. So he drops some damage there. I just simply move out of it, making it harder for him to land any of his damage. And then I re-engage when it's safe. He now goes into Lich form, which means danger for me. So once again, I just kite. Now he can't land his Lich form skills. As he comes out of it, I re-engage and drop him fairly quickly with my teammates. We then have a Guardian coming into the fight. So once again, kite off, he misses his Greatsword Burst, does get a pull on me. Once again, I kite out, buy time for my team to come in and we get a third kill. So more or less, try not to be a dummy by just W keying at your enemy and trying to stay on them at all times. That is what basic kiting is. Next, we have Line of Sighting. This one is very straightforward. All it involves is using your environment around you to shield you from taking projectile damage. That's literally it. It's good to just bounce in and out of line of sight sometimes, especially if you're getting plus one by let's say a ranger or something with a longbow and you just need some shield, so use your environment. Thirdly, we have no port spots. These are prevalent across SPVP and World vs World maps. It is very much intended by ArenaNet that you use them. No port spots are spots on the map which require you to jump to access them. They cannot be teleported to, meaning if you can kite to these spots, classes such as Thieves, Revenants, Mesmers, just as a few examples, cannot teleport directly onto you and this makes it very hard for them to drop you when used correctly. We're going to revisit this clip shortly, but notice how I'm in a 1v3, so I get on top of the no port spot and that allows me to sit in a safer position where I can drop one of these players. Finally, we have advanced kiting. This is more or less just a culmination of the previous three sections, using basic combat kiting, line of sighting, no pot sports, all together with the right timing and decision making. Now that we understand what kiting is, let's answer the question, why should we kite? This question could be answered in so many ways, but to summarize, the reasons we kite are to turn a losing situation into a winning one, to waste enemy time and resources, for example, if you're being outnumbered, to buy time for your teammates to win fights or make the right rotations, and then finally, obviously, to not die, or at least make it very difficult and time consuming to kill you. Taking these into consideration, you'll now be wondering, when do I kite? Basic kiting should be embedded into your gameplay, especially if you play range based or high mobility builds. However, no ports and line of sighting are to be used for the prevention of situations that would normally get you killed. For example, you're low on cooldowns and losing a 1v1. Kite. You're being targeted in a team fight by multiple players. Kite. You're the last person alive on your team after a team fight. Kite. You're getting plus ones in a fight. Kite. Kiting in all these situations is much better than simply giving in to death. Hopefully that's getting the ball rolling in your head. So let me show you some examples of how good players kite. I'll start with myself and commentate my thought process in these clips. So let's start with the clip you're seeing right now. I was in a 1v1, suddenly a necromancer decides to jump in making it a 1v2. So what do I do? I'm probably going to die in that situation, so let me kite away. It turns out it's just a necro who ended up following me to the far node which I'd captured just earlier. So I decide to take this 1v1, but you'll find in just a moment here, I'm going to be plus one again by an engineer. So even though I'm winning this 1v1, it's 
probably gonna not end well for me, so I decide to kite out. The engineers engage, and look what I do here. I do a fake jump, which is another advanced tip, uh, which forces them both to drop off because they think I'm falling off, and that gives me some space there to kite away with my gun saber. So the scrapper decides to follow me here, just the scrapper, so I make the decision to take this fight again. But as you can see, now a berserker has joined the fight. Then I realize uh, I've actually got some more teammates around me, so I can probably take this fight. Instead of doing that, I decide, let me go back to 1v1ing this Necro on the far node because this is a winning matchup for me. I can definitely easily win this. And as you can see, I drop him pretty quickly, forcing him to start kiting. But then a Mesmer joins in the fight. So once again, I drop down. Although I probably could have killed that Necromancer, I do drop down and uh, decide to kite again. So I kite back to the node. They've actually peeled off once again. Like I said, it just makes it very time consuming and annoying for them to kill you. So often they just give up and then I just decap this node, fully recapture it. So after I recap the node, I notice the scrapper coming in again. He goes into his stealth to do a burst. So as you can see, I just kite away, instantly stun break it, and then I decide to take this 1v1. Once again, this is a winning matchup for me. So it's a good idea to take that 1v1 until I get plus one by this Mesmer again right here, which takes me straight back to the original point of just kiting away. So I think you guys can start getting uh, the idea of it here. Pretty much any losing situation, which this probably would be a losing situation, trying to 1v2 two classes that are very glassy, have a lot of damage. And uh, right there, you can see I caught back up after dropping. That's just another example of advanced kiting. You know, when you've got ports and stuff like that, you can bait people off edges, port back up. And uh, as you can see, it's just ring around the rosy here. Moving around line of sighting, using my movement skills to just make it extremely hard for them to catch me. And I can guarantee you nine times out of 10, players would die in this situation if they weren't kiting the way I'm doing right here. As you can see, once again, the Mesma has left. It's just me and the Scrapper left here and uh, I go back to taking this 1v1. So you might be thinking, yeah, but they got the node, so they got the value out of it. But in fact, it's actually the other way around. Because I've kept two players there, my team has been able to cap the big buff, getting us all three nodes. And as you can see, the Scrapper was very salty because he doesn't know what kiting is. But hey, now you do. I've got another few quick clips just to really drive it home for you guys. Here I am in a team fight. I'm trying to focus down this Guardian, but my teammates actually go down, leaving me in like a 1v2 or 1v3 or something. So what do I do? I pop my Spectral Walk, I just kite out. If you know Necro, you can port back on your Spectral Walk, so that's exactly what I do. I bait a player to follow me, go back to the node, kill this Guardian really quickly actually, and then... As you can see, my teammates are already back in the fight. So all I've done is just buy time there and turn a situation that would have got me killed into a situation where we've now killed them, they've got no value out of it, and we've got the node. All right, so back to this clip from earlier. So I'm entering a team fight here at middle. The thief is my target because I can reveal him and I drop him really quickly. But unfortunately, one of my teammates go down once again and is actually going to end up rallying this thief, unfortunately, just as he's about to die. So I stay back on that target, drop him again. My other teammate rallies this thief as well. So now I'm all alone in this team fight and I just kite up to the no port spot, knock them back and then range burst this uh, reaper actually from a you know safe spot now my team's re-entered the fight and i've got someone down and you know their team is very weakened as you can see there's another low target right there i think my teammates get him down yes they do and then i just finish off this wheel bender and then suddenly this mesmer walks in to a big team fight where his team's all down and um you know just this works out in the favor of our team we get some kills and move on all right guys, last clip. I know you guys are probably getting sick of me if you're even still here watching, but pretty much uh, I same game. I go to the far node. It's very tight at this point. So this is a pivotable, pivotable, pivotal, pivotal moment. <laughs> I'm in a 1v2. So what do I do? I just try and keep these players busy, try and get my team to win the rest of the map. So I'm kiting up into this no port spot again. This Necro follows me and I just give him a nice little burst there. Unfortunately, it's the same guy, you know, he's just a victim in this in this game, I guess. Uh, he keeps following me, so I'm just keeping him busy, taking this 1v1 while the other, uh, I think it was a wheelbender, is taking that node. And then after he takes it, I just kite up again. Uh, but I 
do notice that Necro is very low and I know I can, you know, get him down with this range burst just as I do on the note here. I drop the Necro, Willbender's now jumping in and, you know, it's just it's just easy work from here. The, the Willbender doesn't really make a good decision. He decides to stick the res and uh, I pretty much just, you know, cleave him out. Nice and easy, guys. Once again, 1v2 turns into a winning situation. Take notes, boys. But we're going to go through a quick example here because I know these have all been PvP clips. So we're going to go through a quick World vs. World example here. All right, guys. So here we have Sukaya. I believe this video is called This Is What Makes World vs. World Enjoyable episode three something like that um but as you can see uh kiting in world of sword is a lot harder because the spots are much less apparent but sakai is like an absolute freak at this like they know all these spots perfectly like much better than myself even uh so it's hugely outnumbered fight sakai is just kiting up to these spots that 90 percent of players are not going to know how to get on top of and that just gives uh them a huge advantage um you know, there's there's not a whole lot to this clip other than the fact that Sakai just kites beautifully. And, uh, you know, it's a really nutty clip. The, the original video is like over 10 minutes long. So, I mean, go check that out. I know Sakai also streams. And, uh, yeah, very, very, very good player, especially when it comes to kiting. So, definitely check that out. But, yeah, I wanted to show you guys that kiting is not only subject to SPVP. Uh, can be done in World vs. World as well. It's definitely something you want to learn if you want to get better at Guild Wars 2 PvP or World vs. World Combat. Oh, that's a wrap, guys. I mean, I hope this was really helpful to some of you. Uh, definitely leave a like, a sub, and a comment on this video. It took a lot of effort, guys, so some support would be very appreciated. I guess I'll end this video by letting you guys know I do one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions. I've coached well over 100 people at this point in Guild Wars 2, so if you're interested in that, read the description, and that'll lead you to the right place. Have a great day, guys. Peace out.